Okay, we're back recording. So uh, we're gonna move on to the last weapon I want to cover. And I know I've not covered any two-handed weapons or a lot of things I missed, but I'm gonna talk about axe and shield. Um, so yeah, this is probably the most uh, experimental <laughs> of the weapons I looked at, um, just um, because getting, and getting sort of bounding safe axes is a bit difficult. Um, but you know, I did enough of it to kind of have a rough idea. So in terms of movements, the axe kind of you know has the same basic cuts um, as um, the sword, with the exception of the fact, or exception, that rising cuts can be kind of awkward. Um, and one thing I found uh, with the axe is a lot of the times I'd actually be going from a shoulder position back to the position via a um, and I'd be cut and I tended to favor higher guards. Um, so obviously like you know, this high guard um, up here, but even from just like right and left shoulder um, tended to work quite well. And so what I, um, and so what I do differently with the axe when I cut is I cut and I'll just move the shield, mostly to rest my arm, but also so you can see, cut, and then I moulinay the axe back to the position. So from the side, I'm cutting, and then I'm letting the axe swing through. Or if from the other side, and from the other shoulder, I'm cutting, and I'm letting the axe swing back through. And I always moulinay the axe away from the shield, because if I do this, I get caught in the shield and tangle myself. Um, so it's always, the axe is always coming, uh, the axe is always going um, past my non-shield side or past my weapon side. So if, for those who are following along and practicing at home, let's just start with the right shoulder and um, I'll just get you to attack and back to your shoulder. 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 Attack and back to your shoulder, attack, and back to your shoulder. And then let's try that on the other side. Um, <laughs> cut that. Um, so from the left shoulder, you know, attack, rotate round, and come above your head, back to your shoulder. Um, and I find this is actually a really good kind of feigning opportunity. If you throw, and your opponent is used to you coming back to your shoulder to before you throw again, or they're trying to time hit you, you can actually throw, come back to your shoulder, and then come from the other side. I'll show you the front, throw, back to your shoulder, and then straight to the, back to the other side um, as a way of timing your attack. So throw and back to your shoulder, throw and back to your shoulder, throw, and back to your shoulder, throw and back to your shoulder, throw and back to your shoulder. My arm is gonna be very sore tomorrow. <laughs> this is probably a good thing about shields is one of the best work, arm workouts you'll ever get. All right. So obviously you have a lot of similar movements with the ax as um, the sword. Um, I don't really want to cover um, I don't necessarily want to cover um, any move the same because uh, one reason, just to save time, but the other is it's actually really important to your learning to try um, adapting things. So if you're watching this at home or you just remember the video of the session, um, you know, at some point try and do, watch the sword video, but try and do it with, um, try and do those movements with an ax and see how it goes. Um, so instead I'm going to focus on how the axe is different and uh, the obvious thing which everyone brings up is hooking. Um, I mean, um, I don't think hooking was the primary role of the axe and I don't find it's as decisive on combat as, um, as a lot of other practitioners. And even like, because I was wearing, you know, like gear designed to withstand a long sword and, I, and going a bit more speed, I found that um, hooking with the axe became less important than using wool and emotions to faint. Um, but it's still a useful thing. Um, and there is the obvious hook where I throw an attack, 
But instead of throwing forward, so sort of projecting my axe out, the wood, I keep my axe at a 90 degree angle and pull. And what I want to do is get, when I get to here, when I make contact, is I pull, um, and I even twist my hip and pull my um, hand to my hip. And you, if you've ever done um, karate as a kid or taekwondo or something, you, you punch and you pull back. This movement is very powerful. Um, and that's how you pull your opponent's shield out of the way. So what I do is I hook and pull, hook and pull, hook and pull, hook and pull, hook and pull. Hook and pull. And I am deliberately throwing from the pull position again, because the way you use this in um, when you are fighting is you hook, pull, and throw. Let's try that. So hook, throw, hook, throw, hook, throw, hook, throw, hook, throw. Hook, throw. And you notice with my throw, I'm projecting straight out, I'm just flicking. Um, and I find this movement, like just bouncing the axe back and forth and just doing like really quick snipey cuts is really, really effective um, as well. And it takes advantage of the, the, um, you know, the head of the, or the weight of the axe head. Thanks, bang. Um, and you can do the same, like you can do the same motion on the other side. Um, I find that no matter which side you go, you sort of always end up coming to basically a center line and pulling back. Um, I, find I never managed to get right to work really work, right coming up and back. And I, I guess in terms of openness and, you know, variety, it, I think it's probably something that could work um, just not so something that I've ever got to work. Um, but it's probably worth practicing just from underarm, extend, hook, come back to his forward right shoulder and throw. So extend, hook and throw. Extend, hook and throw. Extend, hook and throw. Extend, hook and throw. Let's do it as a fluid movement. One, Two, three, and just actually twist my hip to get a bit more power because that does work. Four and five. Um, it just kind of dawned on me then that this movement would be very effective if someone is holding their shield out with the flat, that you could come up and basically whip it up in, you know, to blind them. Um, or, you know, there might be times where you could get that to work through timing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something that, you know, you all at home can experiment with and, you know, tell me how to do it, which, you know, I would really appreciate because, you know, I do love it when kind of people take something that I've given them and improve on it and bring it back and teach me stuff. Um, because, yeah, I think that's kind of, that's, you know, what we're here for is all sort of collective learning. All right, so the other way in which the axe is really good with hooking, weirdly enough, is by thrusting. So if I've got an axe, what I can do is thrust in against the rim of the shield and turn the shield. So I basically trap the shield, if you can see that, here between sort of where the head of the, the shaft, the axe pokes out and then the head. And that gives me control, a lot of control in this plane. Um, and the cool thing about this is it's, it is the one bind or hook that is rely usefully effective against someone holding their shield with the the, um, the edge forward. So you can thrust and cut. This is where that more name motion comes back in. Um, so what I do is um, you know even sweep down like this with your hand to make it look like you're going to cut to try and prompt your opponent to respond. But I thrust and then cut. Um, so I thrust out, I'm pushing into the rim of their shield, if you can imagine that, and then flicking it aside and cutting. Um, and the other thing about this biomechanically is the point where I engage footwork um, is the point where I want to come forward, or you know, is the point where I've made contact. So I get contact here, I push with my feet, 
and I'm using my body, I'm using my body weight to displace the shield as I come in. So thrust, or basically hook and lunge. And hook and lunge. 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 Right, so that's kind of, those are the sort of the various ways I found that hooking works. Um, when you're doing the full maze, um, if you've got a steel axe, um, really make sure you pull your blows because these things can hit quite hard. Um, but yeah, I found that was, that actual push, like using the head that way to hook was really, really effective. Um, whereas, you know, hooking this way is good and hook and pull is good. Um, but I found from here, one, I could hit someone on the edge and displace, um, but two, because my axe is forward already, it's a very, very quick movement to then take advantage of that. Whereas with this, I'm pulling, um, and I really, really need to get a big displacement to take advantage, um, or I need a big displacement to get my shield in um, and come in, you know, with the advantage, come in with an advantage in the bind. Um, the other way the axes are really, really useful is the head can reach around a shield. So if you see my shield here, if an axe comes in, it can actually reach over the top of a weapon. And with a big wide shield, yeah, that's not necessarily going to be hugely useful. And with a flat shield, with a shield held like this, getting all the way back to here to crop me on the upper arm um, or the elbow, and I have been winged on the elbow by someone doing this, um, you know, is difficult. But where this becomes really, really useful is in um, defeating weapon defenses. So if you've got someone who likes to defend a lot with their sword, you can actually basically attack to invoke a parry and then redirect into the hand. And, you know, like with this, you can see kind of, I'll get a bit closer so you can all see, you can see how much, um, how much overlap there is and how what, which means that, you know, to parry an axe with a sword by itself, you need a, very, a much wider parry to be safe. And even then not so much. Um, and just as an extension or a extension of um, what I said when I talked about um, single axe like two, three months ago, what, what even is 2020, like honestly? Um, it's a lot easier to do that when you're dealing with like a medieval or um, like a Viking Age sword um, than against like a cutlass or like a saber with a shell guard because getting reaching around the shell guard with the head of the axe is too difficult. Um, but those kind of redirect attacks are quite can be quite effective. Um, I'd like to try them in a shield wall. I don't know how they go given how short this weapon is, but like as in I don't know if I could actually get close enough to do one. But you know, throwing go throw and then pull cut. It's really effective. So to show that from the side, throw and pull cut. Throw and pull cut. Throw and you're seeing, unlike the, um, unlike the um, hooking motion where I'm keeping my, my arm at the axe at 90 degrees, this I'm throwing all the way out like I would with a normal cut, except I'm pulling my arm short to bring the, the axe head shorter to catch um, a parry, to catch a weapon parry. So throw and cut, throw and pull, throw and pull, throw and pull, throw and pull, throw and pull. And throw and pull. Um, that's kind of the other thing I discovered with the axe. Um, like reaching around is quite useful. Oh, there's one more thing I discovered. Um, it's not something I've ever done in bouting. So I don't, actually, I think I did this in bouting once. And it was with my friend Eric, who I could get away with this stuff with because Eric is kind of unbreakable. But otherwise, for safe reasons, <laughs> questions. You can use the axe to hook legs. So getting an axe behind the knee, because everything comes to a really fine point, um, you can basically pull a person's leg up really easily. Like there's, if I was wrestling, I was doing modern styles of wrestling, 
Um, when I said I know much about Gleam before, that was specifically about Gleam, not about wrestling in general. I've done a, um, a bit of like submission wrestling in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, if someone gets a hold of my leg, um, my immediate defense is to put all my weight on that leg to make it as hard for them to lift me up as possible. Um, yeah. Um, with the ax, because of because all of the force of the ax pulling is over, you know, even a blunt head, like a rounded head like this alone, like one that's actually sharp, keeping your weight on the leg is really hard to do. Like you just it just lifts up. So you can hook the ax. Um, you know, if you're in close, if you're in a bind, so you know, if you imagine my opponent has crashed their shield into mine, um, we're pressing against it, I get my axe free. I can reach down and pick their leg up um, and push forward and, dro and drop them. Um, with Eric, I just picked his leg up. I didn't actually do anything to knock him over. Thing. I just, just did it and then we had a bit of a laugh. Um, but yeah, theoretically you could grab the leg, come down behind the leg and just pull. And, what I, and part of the reason, um, and I know people are going to complain about this, the reason I'm holding the shield flat is I'm imagining someone has their, their shield in the same position pressed against mine, which is what happens in a bind. You don't sit like this if your opponent isn't binding you. Um, you can reach down, hook and push. 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 And hook and push. So yeah, it is a very quick way to just basically knock someone on their ass. Um, but it is also not a very nice thing to do when you've got like friends who you're training with. Um, so yeah, that's um, Axe. Um, yeah, so obviously um, all the thing, the bits of Axe that are different to Sword, um, cause there are a lot of similar movements you can do. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my, my, my observation with it. Um, are there any other questions, comments, conundrums, condemnations, compliments, complications, um, or anything else anyone wants to ask about next while we're here? Maybe a suggestion. Oh, um, yes. When hook yeah. Uh, when hooking the uh, shield with your axe, um, either by pulling or pushing as you demonstrated, um, when you're doing that, uh, you could also engage in a shield bind as a follow-up to make sure that um, your turn strike is unhindered, uh, if you catch my meaning. Yeah, so um, just take me a piece out. So if you need to correct me, you're going to have to wait until I'm, I'll get back in. I'm sorry. Um, but so your idea is kind of I hook and bind. So I've come in and I basically press down to then get a clean strike. Um, sorry, um, I'm hoping that's, is, is that kind of what you were suggesting? Um, in a way, um, if you give me a minute. Uh, yep. <laughs> this is cool. I, sorry, just, it's really, really cool that like, you know, you can sort of show off <laughs> various arm breaks. <laughs> um, you know, it's kind of you should, you know, you just have like an armor shot on top of your week. Um, yeah. Jasper, you're muted. No, I'm not. Thank you. I was going to um, say. Um, as you hook, you, of course, with the hip movement, you bring your shield forward. You can then change through and strike whilst you're binding the weapons. Ah. Yeah, and you also, and I noticed as well, you've got like a lot of rotation from your hips, which is going to make it more powerful. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend also offered to help in demonstrating. Trying to work from home. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you hook, keeping the weapons occupied, and then you have a clean strike to the head. 
Nice. That that's Thank very you. cool. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, but that was just the one uh, the one thing I wanted to demonstrate. Okay, well, thank you for that. That's that's really cool. Um, I'm, gonna to, I'm gonna have to retry. Um, I'm, gonna have to re, I'm gonna have to retry um, a, lot, a lot of this stuff now. Um, yeah, cool. But yeah, thank you for that. Um, yeah, no, I think it's. Um, I mean, if I had a longer workshop for each weapon, um, I'd probably talk more about sort of stringing things together. Um, but that's a really, really cool use of sort of like you know, hooking and then binding and yeah, um, that's, that was cool. Um, cool. So is there anything didn't mean, else? Didn't mean to overtake your, uh, your lectures or uh, unvalidate whatever you said, because you made for perfectly fine points. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's, um, it's, this is the thing that like we, we, it's the discourse, you know, we're all like, you know, everyone's kind of adding their own thing. And um, I guess this goes back to what I was saying before about not, seeing me as an authority or as an authority figure or as like, um, you know, as a definitive word on anything. Um, because I actually, I want to be honest, one of the reasons why I kind of got a bit disenfranchised with um, the Viking Age fighting was, uh, or the weapons was, at least out here in Australia, I noticed that People were getting very, were feeling very definite about this is definitely what was done historically. And this is proper Viking fight, not just Viking Age weapons um, and things like that, and um, and not just you know our take on kind of what does and doesn't work. Um, and when I'm like, hang on, you, you know that's no, maybe not the best way to approach it. A lot of people kind of pushed back, saying no, no, like this is according to whoever. You know, and they're an expert, or they're an authority. They're an authority, and we should listen to them. And I'm like, no, like we don't actually know a lot of a lot about this very definitively. And having like, I think, kind of making someone an expert in a sense, making someone saying, you know, this person is an authority figure who can't be questioned, um, particularly when we know we know so little, is really really problematic. So you know, obviously, I really appreciate you jumping in. I really appreciate everything you brought to this workshop um, because it, and it's been really nice for me to kind of have you know different opinions and um, also to have someone with like more of an with more of like an archaeology background as well so thank you for that um, yeah cool so is there, any, is there anything else anyone wants to add before we finish um, the lesson move to discussion I won't take this in no, so I'm going to finish recording. So, um, yeah, next week we're doing a debrief for the year. So, uh, there's a few things I got wrong <laughs> um, that I was going to kind of, and a few, a few things I want to retouch on um, that I thought were cool and wanted to mention. Um, but also, I just thought it'd be nice to kind of all sort of catch up for the end of the year and um, have a drink and a bit of a chat. Um, so, yeah, we'll be back then. Um, but I'm going to end recording now. Um, but for everyone who's here, you know, this is the bit where we sort of hang around and um, just chat in more detail.